Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Coburn, and today's episode, we're talking about the first round of the 2018 NFL Draft Class, specifically analytics metric grades. Uh, and I know it's draft season and everybody hates grades. They hate grades on prospects. They hate grades about analysts. And the reason why is because analysts are mostly never 100% right. And especially when it comes to uh, the analysts that do forecasting, where a lot of times they'll have players ranked higher in their board, mainly because of access. Uh, it, it's essentially like this. They, if, if a team is giving them access to information, and they like a certain player, and they and and that player's not good, and they tell them they're not good. They're likely not going to get access to that team in the future because hey, you you need to praise me. You need to make me feel good. Um, you know, you can't really be brutally honest with how teams um, view prospects. Sometimes you have to sugarcoat things. You have to do stuff like that, and that's why this channel is a lot different from forecasting. Uh, guys because the forecasting guys will definitely be able to tell you where a guy's gonna go uh, like it, you know when you're talking about the major draft guys out there like Mel Kuyper etc they have they'll have pretty good information in terms of what teams actually like and what where teams are kind of steering in terms of you know where they want to target guys and stuff like that but that has nothing to do with their actual viability as starters at the NFL level that has nothing to do with whether or not the player will bust or not. It purely just has to do with the ability of whether of how high this player is gonna get drafted, which is all about the team that decides to draft the player. So again, this video is, is not about your feelings. It's not about uh, how I really feel about these prospects either. Uh, it's mainly about what the data says about them. Uh, and I'll make this really simple. Thumbs up, thumbs down uh, for the most part. Thumbs up for a player who from an analytical perspective, hits every number you want, has a very good chance of being a successful player at the NFL level, or thumbs down, meaning that the player, either there was better options on the on paper, or the player has a very low odds of becoming a, a successful player at the NFL level, and thus has a relatively high bust rate, or bust chance, if you will. Um, so that's what the video is gonna do. I'm not really going to get too much into who's going to be better long term in terms of high quality potential because a lot of the players that were taken in the first round have high quality potential. But I'm just going to get into is this player going to become, become a successful player for this team? Is this player going to become a starter for this team? That kind of stuff. So I'm not going to get too much into well this player should have went over this player and so on and so forth. But I'm just going to focus purely on what the numbers say about these players in terms of their likelihood of being successful at the next level. And we're going to go through the entire first round. I'm going to go through things as quickly as possible. Uh, but if you're new to the channel and you're new to the work that I do, all terms and definitions will be in the description. Um, so if you're not familiar with any of the work that I do, you can just go to the description to get all that information. With that out of the way, we'll start with the first pick of the draft, the Cleveland Browns select Baker Mayfield. As I've said in previous videos, uh, pretty much hits every single metric you're looking for in terms of high school production, college production, career production, thresholds. And this is one of those picks where I will give two thumbs up. A Pulp Fiction two thumbs up on this particular draft pick. So I, I like this pick uh, in many ways. And, and I think that uh, he was pretty much the best testing quarterback from an analytical perspective in this class. And that's who the Cleveland Browns selected number one. And then we get to number two, Saquon Barkley running back out of Penn State. Uh, Production-wise, has five-time Pro Bowl potential based on his production. Hits more in the Pro Bowl range versus All-Pro range. Not really a generational talent from a production standpoint. From an athleticism standpoint, crazy athletic uh, explosion numbers and speed numbers, as you can clearly see. Did not participate in all flexibility testing, so we don't really know the three cone and those other sort of areas. As much as people hate this pick because of positional value, and I do agree with a lot of that sentiment, I think the Giants could have gone in a lot of different areas here and would have came out better. But ultimately, is Saquon Barkley going to become a successful NFL player based on the data, based on his athleticism traits, and based on his production traits? Yes. And thus, I'm going to give him one thumbs up in a very angry manner, uh, of course. Uh, so I'm going to give a seven thumbs up. Where uh, I'm kind of, you know... I'm kind of, I have a lot of emotions coming here, you know, like, um, do I give a thumbs up? Do I not give a thumbs up? 
Like that's where I'm at right now. What's in the box? Uh, and then we get to the New York Jets select uh, Sam Darnold, quarterback out of USC. Uh, very good production traits uh, across the board. Uh, and you know, I just I just think he's a very very good uh, prospect when you uh, when you get through everything. So you know, again, hits the career production thresholds. He's the only other quarterback in this class other than Baker Mayfield that has all pro potential based on the career data. And because of that pick, I'm going to give them a two thumbs up as well. The good and the bad and the ugly, uh, two thumbs up. So, yeah, I, I like the pick. I think I'm going to give it two thumbs up on this one. Uh, then we get to Denzel Ward, a cornerback out of Ohio State. Uh, Production-wise, as I've mentioned in previous videos, very good pass deflection data. Solo tackle data, not that great. Uh fringe pro bowl potential asante samuel is like the best outcome if you want to know more about my thoughts on denzel ward just go to uh denzel ward analytics into youtube if you type that in and it'll pull up my video uh where i get into more depth here but you know production wise a couple question marks great athleticism traits is he going to become a successful player based on the data yes uh you know he's going to be successful uh you know he has athleticism traits that are great his production is good uh, and especially when it comes to pass flexion data. So I will give this one thumbs up. So I think he'll be a successful player. May have been a bit of a reach at four, but I do think he's going to work out long term. Then we get to number five. Uh, Den the Denver Broncos select Bradley Chubb, edge out of North Carolina State. Uh, very good production traits. Athleticism data is where he runs into a bit of a snag in terms of his flexibility testing. Uh, did not test like an all-pro level edge rusher based on his athleticism testing, but did test like a Pro Bowl level uh, edge rusher. And because of that, I'm going to give him one thumbs up. No country for stiff edge rushers, as they say. But I still think he'll work out. Then we get to the Indianapolis Colts, who select Quentin Nelson, offensive guard out of Notre Dame. Uh, production, uh, athleticism-wise, excuse me, hits all the sort of marks you're looking for in terms of uh, all pro potential guard athleticism traits uh, looks more like a pro bowl guard versus an all pro guard when you look at the averages but still very strong overall profile and even though this is not a sexy pick Quentin Nelson is a really good player guys so you know I understand there's a lot of talk about Andrew Luck and his health and uh, they could have done a lot of different things but ultimately I, I do like this pick a lot and that's why I'm going to give him two Rambo thumbs up so like that pick. Uh, then we get to the first pick of the top 10 where I didn't like uh, the Buffalo Bills select Josh Allen, quarterback out of Wyoming. Uh, production data-wise, he failed to hit the high school uh, production number 100% uh, of long-term starting quarterbacks since the 2004, uh, well, 2017 NFL draft class had at least a 69 or higher high school production score. And Josh Allen only had a 55.40. On top of that, had a 26 uh, starter score. His career production data does not hit anywhere near all pro potential or pro bowl potential. And that's since the 1958 NFL draft class. There's never been a all pro or pro bowl quarterback with as low of a career production score that Josh Allen has had in that time span. He, he does hit at least the starter threshold, the bottom end starter threshold. But when you look at the averages at the position in terms of career, whew, bad. And on top of that, I was able to do one final uh, data analysis this basically takes into account uh, all the data I usually do with the QB score. The QB, you know, the QB score is the FBS score essentially. But I added a layer of pass rate. So how often do you pass the football? Uh, you know, in terms of his data. And when you add that layer of data to this, uh, Josh Allen, in terms of all the quarterbacks that have, uh, you know, not all the quarterbacks, but at least a good percentage of the successful quarterbacks. Uh, in terms of uh, based on this data point, Josh Allen is basically the worst. So David Garrard is above him. Trevor Simeon is above him. Uh, Paxton Lynch is above him. Mitch Leidner, Patrick Ramsey, Tara Taylor, J.P. Lossman, uh, Colin Kaepernick, Kyle Bowler. Like Josh Allen is basically one of the worst statistical quarterbacks in a very, very long time. Um, so, and this is since 2001, at least when it comes to the pass rate data, which I'm going I'm to try to extend it in the off season, but, um, it was one last thing I worked on, but essentially all this data, all this chart really shows 
is just it takes into account all the data that the FBS score entails, but adds a layer of pass rate. So how often does he pass the football? And um, Josh Allen did not pass the football that much on top of being just dreadful um, as a passer. Um, so again, this is not a guy who they leaned on to win football games. They leaned on the running game to win football games. Um, so that just kind of scares you a little bit more. And because of that, I'm going to give this a thumbs down. By the way, that's probably what I'm going to look like in real life in about 20 years. So just so you know. Uh, or, or 30 years. Hopefully 30 years. Hopefully not 20. Uh, and then we get to the Chicago Bears, who select Roquan Smith, linebacker out of Georgia. Uh, very good production traits overall. Uh, you know, again, probably the best uh, FBS testing in terms of solo tackle market share, 99.15. Athleticism testing runs into a bit of a snag in terms of his explosive lower body strength score. There's never been a multiple all-pro, multiple Pro Bowl linebacker to have as low of a explosive lower body strength score as Roquan Smith. Didn't do the flexibility testing as well, but I do think there's enough positives in terms of his production data. I think there's enough positives in terms of his speed score that he could end up becoming an outlier when it comes to this data. So even though there are these big question marks here, and if Roquan Smith does end up busting, there will be something to look towards as to the reason as to why. But ultimately, I just think when you look at the production data, which is by far more predictive in many ways in terms of determining successful linebackers uh, than just athleticism alone, uh, and Roquan just hits it out of the park. So ultimately, I'm going to give this a one thumbs up not two but one so, uh, and then of course we get to the san francisco 49ers who take mike mcglinky mcglinche I, I i'm sorry i can't i'm sorry uh the offensive tackle from notre dame uh only issue with him did not do much athleticism testing 40.88 out of 100 and when you look at the averages at the offensive tackle position it's just not that great uh, in terms of his data. Um, he's at bottom end threshold in terms of Pro Bowl potential in terms of his explosive lower body strength score. Did not do the 40 yard dash, did not do the short shoulder of the three count, so I don't really know much else. Because of that lack of athleticism data, and since this is a metric grading, uh, you know, like the whole point of this is to grade these guys based on their data. And because he lacks so much data, I'm gonna have to give this a thumbs down. He could end up becoming a successful tackle. Uh, based on film and based on other sort of factors, but if you're just basing it purely on data, um, there's a lot of question marks with him. Then we get to the Arizona Cardinals who select Josh Rosen, quarterback out of UCLA. Uh, very good high school and college production traits. Uh, in terms of his career production data, he hits at least the bottom end threshold for all pro uh, potential. When you look at the averages at the position though, he looks more like a pro bowl player than an all pro player when you just look at the averages. But Still, solid overall pick. I think he has a good chance of becoming a successful NFL quarterback to Pro Bowl quarterback and is essentially in that top three quarterbacks in this class. Like He's in that mix in terms of the top four um, best quarterbacks in, based on data in this class. So I think Josh Rosen has a very good chance of being a successful player. Because of that, I'm going to give him a solo thumbs up. Then we get to Minka Fitzpatrick. Uh, Miami Dolphins select Minka Fitzpatrick, defensive safety slash cornerback out of Alabama. Uh, when you look at his cornerback data, he looks like a potential Pro Bowl to All-Pro cornerback. Uh, and then when you look at his free safety data, he basically looks like a very good starter who might miss the market a bit in terms of Pro Bowl potential because of his solo tackle data. Um, the same thing goes with the well, with the with the uh, thresholds and, and of course the averages at the position. Um, Athleticism-wise, he basically has Pro Bowl level athleticism traits uh, for a cornerback. Ultimately, I the, my issue with this pick is that there was, there was just kind of better players on the board. There were better cornerbacks. There were better, uh, you know, there it just didn't I just didn't vibe with this pick. Mika Fitzpatrick definitely has a chance to become a successful player uh, based on the data, um, but ultimately I just have to give this a thumbs down just because I think that there were better. Like, there's just better stuff there. There's better cornerbacks. There's better lots of different things like that. So, um, does he have a chance to be a successful player? Yes. Is this a little high for a guy like this where you, it's really hard to see what what is he exactly? Like, there's a lot of unknowns here based on his data profile. Um, and because of that, I just have to give it a thumbs down here. 
Then we get to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. You select Vite Davia, no tackle out of Washington. When you look at his uh, no tackle production traits, he doesn't really hit all the all pro marks he needs to hit, nor the Pro Bowl marks he needs to hit, but does hit the starter marks. Um, when you look at the averages at the position, he doesn't look much better um, as a all pro, Pro Bowl, or starter level player because of his uh, TFL production. Uh, the only thing you're riding on is his athleticism traits. He had a 95.73 speed score which is very fantastic, but didn't do the explosion testing and did not do the short shell or three cone either to determine his flexibility testing. Ultimately though, you're picking a guy at 12 who has a very low chance of becoming all pro to pro bowl level nose tackle, uh, or almost a zero chance. There's never been an all pro to pro bowl nose tackle with his level of production. Um, ultimately, I do have to give this a thumbs down. Um, there definitely is some chance that he has an athletic upside to become something really, really interesting at the next level. But this is just way too high to take a player like this, um, considering uh, you know other sort of guys that are that you know a little bit more of based on data like Taven Bryan, etc. Uh, then we get to Washington Redskins, who select Jerron Payne, no sack out Alabama. Um, great athleticism traits for the most part, as you can clearly see here. Production-wise, is a little bit worse than Vita Villa. Uh, worse in terms of uh, sack data. Worse in terms of TFL data. Uh, when you look at the bottom and thresholds, does not hit all pro potential or pro bowl potential. And of course, when you look at the averages, same difference. The only positive thing I could say for Daron Payne is that he is a young prospect. He's, he's much younger than Vite Davia. So there is some upside here that maybe if you put him in a different position or maybe if you do you know, different stuff here, like th there's some youthful upside here. But ultimately, a guy that's really more so a starter than a high quality player and you took him really really high uh so is this guy does he, this guy have a chance to become a successful player absolutely but is it really high to take a player like this yes so i'm going to give this a thumbs down unfortunately then of course we get to uh new orleans saints who select marcus davenport edge at utsa uh, very good production marks very good athleticism marks at least in terms of pro bowl potential in terms of athleticism traits uh the trade up was a little much to trade you know, uh, uh, you know, to trade up to take a guy like this, uh, a guy that has does have a lot of different question marks. I mean, Josh Sweat is a guy that honestly probably should have been this player. You know, if you're talking about taking a rare athlete, like a a uh, generational athlete in some in some sense of the word. So, is this player going to be work out successfully? I think so. I think when you look at the athleticism traits and the production traits, there's a very good chance of, uh, of working out. But I, I am a little lukewarm on this. So ultimately, I'm going to give this a taken thumbs up. Uh, I think he might have been taken to the cleaners a bit to get this player, but I do think he might end up becoming successful. Uh, then we get to the Oakland Raiders, who select Colton Miller, offensive tackle out of UCLA. Uh, the best testing offensive tackle in the class based on his athleticism traits. Uh, and of course, when you look at the averages at the position, very good overall and looks kind of like a Pro Bowl level offensive tackle based on the... Um, athleticism traits. Um, ultimately, Raiders Twitter is really down on this pick, and I can understand from a film perspective. If you watch Colton Miller's film, it's not that great. Uh, you know, has a lot of issues in terms of pass protection, but ultimately, great all-around athlete. I have to give this a Tom through Cruz thumbs up because uh, I know Raiders Twitter's hugging me right now, saying, "Is it going to be good? Is it going to be good? Is it going to work out?" I think so. I think ultimately the worst case scenario you have a long-term starter here, uh, but I do understand the sort of uh, thinking about, you know, Durbin James and those other sort of factors. Uh, then of course we get to the Buffalo Bills who select Tremaine Edmonds, linebacker to Virginia Tech. Uh, very good production traits. Athleticism looks a little bit more like a Pro Bowl uh, linebacker than an All-Pro linebacker because of uh, his explosive lower body strength score not being quite where it needs to be. But this is still a very very good pick. This is a very sexy pick. Uh, if you will. Uh, so I'm going to give this a sexy thumbs up. Then we get to Duran James, uh, San Diego Chargers select Duran James, defensive safety out of Florida State. Uh, Pro Bowl level uh, production marks in terms of his potential there, uh, in terms of the averages at the, at the position as well, also has kind of Pro Bowl uh, production marks, but his athleticism testing was the only sort of major question mark. Very explosive, very fast, but his flexibility testing was below average uh, and, and didn't really hit all pro or pro bowl potential in terms of his flexibility testing either. So um, there, I do understand the issues here, but ultimately when you look at the production data, 
You look at his explosion and his speed, I do think this is going to be a very successful player. Either way you slice it. So even though he may not hit all pro to pro level heights, I do think that he's going to end up being a successful player. Because of that, I'm going to give this a Scarface two thumbs up. Um, say hello to my little Derwin James. Then we get to the Green Bay Packers who select uh, Alexander, cornerback out of Louisville. Uh, production traits is a little wishy-washy, of course, as I mentioned in previous videos. But athleticism traits are off the charts. Uh, and uh, because of that, I'm going to give this a Terminator thumbs up. So I do think that Alexander has a good chance. Uh, a lot like Kevin King, but he might be better than Kevin King. He's more athletic than Kevin King. But I do like where the Packers secondary is going with a selection like this. Then we get to the Dallas Cowboys, who select Leighton Vander Esch, uh, linebacker out of Boise State. Uh, very good production traits all, all around. Looks like an all pro to potential linebacker based on his production. Uh, extremely good athleticism traits across the board. I do understand that there was a little too much hoopla over the selection. You know how the Dallas, Dallas was just waiting to the very last second to release the pick and high five in. And I, I, I do understand these, these things. But is he, is he going to become a successful player? Yes. My big question, though, is the Cowboys have Sean Lee, who has a history of injury, Jalen Smith, who has a history of injury, and then you have Leighton Van Der Esch, where you had a couple teams take him off the board because of injury as well. So even though he's productive, even though he's athletic, is he going to stay healthy? That's my major question mark. Bottom line is I'm going to have to give this a con air thumbs up. I think it's going to be a good selection, ultimately. But I do understand some of the concerns in terms of athleticism testing and also just in terms of him being kind of a one-year wonder. Uh, then we get to the Detroit Lions who select Frank Ragnar, offensive center out of Arkansas. Very explosive, very fast, flexibility testing. Not that great, but definitely Pro Bowl level. Uh, and then, of course, when you get to the averages of the position, pretty much hits uh, where you want to hit in terms of uh, you know Pro Bowl potential in terms of his uh, data with the exception of flexibility testing, but all I can really say is very explosive very fast player very good chance of Becoming a Pro Bowl level center because of that explosion because of that speed and because of that I'm gonna give that two Keanu thumbs up Then we get to the Cincinnati Bengals. He's like Billy Price offensive center out of Ohio State as I've said in previous <laughs> videos I just can't get behind uh, You know I just can't, you know, when you take a player where there's virtually no athleticism testing because Billy Price, unfortunately, had the torn pectoral, but he just didn't do any testing, didn't do the 40-yard dash, didn't do the short shawl three-cone, didn't do the vertical and the broad jump, uh, definitely didn't do the bench press because he tore his pec. Uh, ultimately, because there's no data, I have to give this a, thumb, a thumbs down. Can he be successful? Absolutely, but since this is a grading based on metrics, I just... Eh. So ultimately, I have to give this a thumbs down. He could end up becoming successful, but based on data, there's just not enough to really project here. And to take a guy in the first round where you don't have any idea of what his upside is tangibly is really risky. Uh, and then, of course, we get to the Tennessee Titans who select Rashawn Evans, linebacker out of Alabama. Uh, when you get to his production data, he had a 29.29 solo tackle production score. Does not hit the all-pro threshold or pro bowl threshold since uh, the 1989 NFL draft class does hit at least the bottom end starter threshold uh, and I think the more the more dangerous thing with him is just athleticism testing um, he did not run the 40 yard dash so I just went with what NFL draft scout reported as his 40 yard dash which was essentially a 47 flat 40 uh, you know actually 469 excuse me so and 469 is definitely fast it's fast speed but for his size, his 40-yard dash was not that amazing. Um, and the bigger question mark, honestly, was his explosive lower body strength score. Only had a 14.48 explosion score. Um, and again, there's never been a multiple All-Pro or multiple Pro Bowl linebacker with as low of an explosion score like that. Like, that's worse than Roy Quinn Smith. That's worse than, like, uh, Tremaine Edmonds, who is kind of off a little bit in terms of that particular number. Um, and ultimately, you know, the, the guy... This is the thing. This is one of those like money ball moments where you're like, he's a good looking guy. He looks the part, but is he really worth as high of a draft pick as this? And based on the production data, he's not. Based on the athleticism data, he's not. Um, this is a guy that's late to the position. 
And ultimately, you know, people are going to bring up the fact that he played at Alabama, but there are players like Ray Lewis, who played at Miami of all places and was really productive. Jonathan Vilma was still able to be productive with all the players and Hall of Famers that Miami had at the time. Ultimately, I just don't buy those arguments based on the data. C.J. Mosley was a guy that had a lot of you know had a lot of great players too, and he was still able to hit 90 plus percentile production traits. So ultimately, when it comes to Rashawn Evans, uh, he's just a player that production wise does not hit any high quality outcomes. Athleticism wise does not hit any high quality outcomes um, in terms of what he needs to be in terms of explosion and speed for his size. And because of that, I have to give this a thumbs down. Sorry. Uh, then we get to Carolina Panthers, just like DJ Moore, wide receiver out of Maryland. Most productive wide receiver in this draft class based on passing yards, market share production. Uh, pretty much has all pro to pro bowl potential based on those data points. And when you look at his athleticism traits, 90 plus percentile across the board in explosion, speed, and flexibility. Uh, by far has the best chance to be really, really successful. And because of that, I'm going to give that a Ghostbusters 5 thumbs up. I'm going to give it 5 thumbs up here. Because it's that good of a pick. Uh, then we get to the Baltimore Ravens who select Hayden Hurst, a uh, uh, tight end out of South Carolina. Based on his athleticism testing, um, he has, you know, very good explosion, good flexibility, speed score not exactly where it needs to be to be all pro to pro bowl level. Uh, and production wise, good, not great. Uh, you know, it doesn't really hit the, the, the uh, hits at least the all pro above the all pro threshold and definitely the pro bowl threshold. Um, and when you look at the averages at the position, it looks more like a starter than a pro bowler. But the biggest issue with Hayden Hurst is he's just really, really old. This is a guy that's about to be 25 years old. This has Dennis Pitta written all over it. And Pitta was a much more athletic player than Hayden Hurst. Um, you know, so ultimately, I do think Hayden Hurst is going to become a, su a successful player at the next level, but a lot like Dennis Pitta. Um, there's going to be a point where his career is a little shorter than you would like it to be. And because of that, I might have to give this a thumbs down. Um, there were better tight ends on the board. Uh, there were just better other players in general. Um, and, you know, again, I just think ultimately Hayden Hurst is just, eh, you know, so <laughs> I just have to go with that here. Uh, then we get to the Atlanta Falcons. You select Calvin Ridley, wide receiver out of Alabama. When you look at his production data, um, pretty much hits in the three-time Pro Bowl to three-time All-Pro range in terms of his market share production. Look at the averages of the position. He's closer to a starter than a Pro Bowl or All-Pro player based on his market share data. Uh, and when you look at his athleticism testing, he has at least one 54 or higher athleticism trait, which is all you really need to be a Pro Bowl to All-Pro player. But the biggest question mark with Calvin Ridley is his age. Um, his age score is 19.78 out of 100. Um, there's never been an all-pro wide receiver or pro bowl wide receiver since 1999 um, to, to, to not have at least a 51 or 80 uh, score in terms of age. So ultimately, Calvin Ridley is likely a starter. Is he going to become a successful player for the Falcons? I think so. I think there's a very good chance he's going to be a starting wide receiver. And I think this is the best spot for him to be kind of a tag teammate with uh, Julio Jones. But is it is he really worth as high of a pick as it? Uh, so ultimately, I have to give this a thumbs down just because I think there were better players, a lot a lot better players on the board, and Calvin Ridley is just not a first-round wide receiver, guys. So he's definitely a starter, but there are better wide receivers. James Washington, uh, for example, um, is a guy that would have been better here, uh, you know, in terms of just athleticism testing and in terms of uh, production data. Or Michael Gallup, even. Uh, then we get to the Seattle Seahawks, who select Rashad Penny, running back out of San Diego State. Uh, very good production traits. Uh, pretty much hits all pro, five-time Pro Bowl, and three-time Pro Bowl level. Uh, you look at the averages at the position. Uh, Rashad Penny is the only running back in this class who has all pro potential based on his production data. He's the only one. And that's out of every running back in the FBS. Um, so, again, very good production data. Athleticism-wise... Uh, hits a pretty good explosion score, but his speed score is really where he gets it done. 89.24 in terms of his speed score. Did not do flexibility testing, you know, the short show on the three count, so it's hard to determine much with him uh, from that perspective. But I like this pick. Very productive, explosive, fast. Um, actually more athletic than Darius Geis, which I know Geis people may not like that, but he definitely is more explosive than Geis uh, and more productive than Geis. And I think ultimately... Um, I'm not sure if that's the, why Seahawks made this pick 100%, but I do think that 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 uh, 
Penny has a good chance of working out. And because of that, I'm going to give him a Batman thumbs up. Then we get to the Pittsburgh Steelers who select Terrell Edmonds, defensive safety out of Virginia Tech. Uh, when you look at his uh, production data, uh, pretty good solo tackle data, pretty good interception data. Uh, and the only area where he runs into some issues is pass deflection, pass deflection data, but he's really, really close to the bottom and threshold for um, Pro Bowl potential in terms of his uh, pass deflection data. So he's really, really close. When you look at the averages at the position, he doesn't look much better though. Um, but definitely looks like a Pro Bowl uh, to starter level strong safety based on the averages in terms of solo tackle and interception data. But again, the pass flexion data is the only big question mark here. Um, ultimately, though, why the Steelers drafted him was probably because of a combination of that and also his athleticism testing. 99.30 in terms of explosion, 95.30 in terms of speed for his size. Uh, ultimately, Terrell Edmonds is a super athletic, productive, strong safety type who may not hit all pro potential, but does have a slight chance of becoming a Pro Bowl outlier. Um, and as much as a lot of people were like, wow, that was really high for a guy like this, I do see the thinking where the Steelers were going with. And I do think that Edmonds has a good chance of becoming a successful starter for them. And because of that, I'm going to give him a falling down thumbs up. Because I'm falling down into madness at this point. Uh, and then we get to the Jacksonville Jaguars who select Damon Bryan, defense deck out of Florida. Uh, athleticism wise, which is the main selling point, uh, pretty much has Pro Bowl level athleticism traits, very explosive, very flexible for his size. Misses out speed in terms of all pro potential, but still very good. Um, production wise, not the best, but definitely Pro Bowl level uh, in terms of explosion, speed, and flexibility. And then, of course, when you look at the averages, the averages of the position, this is the only major question mark is his TFL production. Um, didn't really hit within the average of a starter, a pro bowler, or all pro player in terms of TFL production. Is that why he's going to bust? Who knows? Do I like this spot? Absolutely. I think this is a, probably the best spot Taven Bryant could absolutely could, could go to, um, you know, when you look at it logically. So um, because of that, I'm going to give it two thumbs up. I think ultimately, uh, you know, again, when, when you look at the when you look at the overall data, I think Taven Bryan does have a chance to be a successful player. Um, and again, that's why I'm going to give him uh, two thumbs up. Then you look at the Vikings who select Mike Hughes, cornerback out of Central Florida, uh, based on his production. Very good pass flexion data, but his uh, solo tackle data is not where it needs to be. Uh, you know, in terms of uh, all pro. Um, or Pro Bowl potential, even when you look at the averages of the position. Athletically, he looks more like a starter than a Pro Bowl or All Pro player. Uh, it doesn't really have great length. Uh, doesn't, I mean, like again, Mike Hughes is a guy where there were just better cornerbacks to be taken above him. Uh, you know, Joshua Jackson, for example, is a guy who's more athletic from an explosion and flexibility standpoint and more productive. Uh, so you could have done better here. But ultimately, is Mike Hughes going to be a successful cornerback based on the data? Yes. Is he going to be amazing? Probably not. Probably just going to be a starter. But because he actually is going to be successful, I'm going to give this a thumbs up. So um, I'm not I'm kind of wishy-washy on this, but ultimately, I just have to say, yeah, thumbs up. Uh, and then, of course, we get to the New England Patriots who select Sonny Michel, running back out of Georgia. Um, based on his production data, 69.32 out of 100. Uh, so pretty much hits at least the five-time Pro Bowl threshold. When you look at the averages at the position, he looks more like a starter than a Pro Bowler. And honestly, he's a little off that spot to a certain extent. Uh, and then when you get to his athleticism testing, he only had a 61.17 speed score and doesn't really hit the 79 or higher athleticism trait that he needs to be an all-pro to Pro Bowl potential uh, running back. Um, bottom line when it comes to Sonny Michel, is he going to be a successful running back? Probably. Is this a really risky pick to take a running back that has a bone-on-bone -bone knee condition? Forget about Jay Ajayi for a moment because Jay Ajayi is Jay Ajayi, you know, um, but it's a bone-on-bone -bone knee condition. The Patriots always take super risky picks all, all the time. Uh, and I, I, you know, I don't really know. And, and most of the time they don't work out too. I mean, sometimes they do. Rob Gronkowski definitely is an example of a guy who worked out, but Sonny Michel does not have Rob Gronkowski upside. You know, this isn't the guy that had elite running back production. So ultimately, I have to give this a thumbs down, man. I think there's better running backs on the board. I think Nick Chubb 
for example, uh, you know, Royce Freeman, etc. So just from that framework, I just don't like this pick that much. Um, could he be successful? Absolutely. But he could also be like Deion Lewis where he's good and then he's on IR. And then he's good and then he's on IR. So ultimately that's my issue with this pick. And then lastly, we get to the Baltimore Ravens who select Lamar Jackson, quarterback out of Louisville. Um, based on his production data, uh, very good uh, very good FBS production data. Pretty much hits Pro Bowl potential. But his high school quarterback score was was really, really low. Did not hit the, uh, the starting quarterback threshold. Of 69 or higher or 84 or higher in terms of Pro Bowl potential. When you look at the career data, 52.40 did not hit the All Pro career threshold or Pro Bowl career threshold in terms of his career FBS score. Uh, and then when you look at the averages of the position, doesn't really hit near the All Pro potential, Pro Bowl potential, or starter potential in terms of the averages here. Ultimately, though. This is the thing I'm going to say. I'm not going to give this a thumbs up or a thumbs down with this pick. And the reason why is because when, when I look at Lamar Jackson, I see a guy that could end up becoming a successful NFL quarterback. Like he has the potential to be a, and I hate to say running quarterback, but a dual threat quarterback, a lot like Cam Newton, a lot like uh, Tyrod Taylor, you know, to where he uses his legs, he makes big plays, he does phenomenal things in terms of his legs on the football field and he may never be an efficient passer in fact I'm going to say that this much he will probably almost never become a really efficient passer like it, it may take him until he's in his 30s before he actually starts to be above average in terms of his passing efficiency as a passer but ultimately is this a guy that can make big plays absolutely does this make sense for the Ravens I mean the Ravens are a team that have Joe Flacco they have an offensive line that's kind of eh they have uh, wide receivers that are, eh. they have tight ends that are kind of, eh. and and you look at Lamar Jackson, you see a guy where you go, listen, Joe Flacco, you were great and everything, but we're moving on. Lamar Jackson, do your thing. I think ultimately that's what I like about this pick is the do your thing kind of mentality here. Um, and even though he may not work out, I do think that this is a player that um, could ultimately uh, you know, become somewhat of an outlier and and kind of save the Ravens a little bit. So we'll see what happens ultimately, but I do think that Lamar Jackson is the guy where there could be one or two years with this guy where you end up in the AFC Championship game. Like, I think, I definitely think that's possible just because of the skill set that he brings to the table. And with that out of the way, we come to the end of the video. Very long, I know, but we're going over all the first round picks. Uh, I'm probably not going to do a day two video. I think after this, I'm just going to do draft grades on first, second, third round on individual teams uh, and kind of shorten it up a bit. But ultimately, that was the first round in terms of uh, analytics. Um, if you if you like all this stuff, if you want to know more about analytics, uh, be sure to purchase the 2018 NFL Draft Guide analytics draft guide which is uh, in the description so you can kind of go there and purchase that guide all proceeds from that help to support the channel help to support me and if you love this channel if you love the content i provide be sure to go out and buy that guide immediately and of course uh, my name is james coburn you can find my other work at draftcoburn.wordpress.com and also follow me on twitter at geometrics and if you like this content and you want more content like this be sure to leave a like and subscribe Share this video as well with anybody that you know. Hit that notification button so that you're always reminded another video of mine drops. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.